Hello, I'm Pastor Timothy James Farrell, and I serve as the founding and lead pastor of a non-denominational church here in Bloomington Normal called The Tab. And I would like to invite you to join us for worship some Sunday morning at 10 a.m. The Tab is located at 1845 West Hovey Avenue in Normal, Illinois. I also want to invite you to visit our ministry website at thetab.tv. There's lots of wonderful resources and ministry there for you to take advantage of. Thank you for being with us today on this Tab Telecast. Here is this week's message. Good morning, everybody. It is so good morning, Hannah. So good to see you. Would you give uh, Tim and Hannah a round of applause? Thank you for leading us this morning. <laughs> wonderful, wonderful job. Isn't it just good news to know that God is for you and not against you? Amen. Amen. You got a good God who, who not only just loves you, but believes in you, is rooting for you. You know, when I was a, an athlete, and I say was, that's past tense, you know, it meant a lot for the cheerleaders, uh, not just on the court, but, uh, but in the stands to be rooting you on, right? Applauding you, encouraging you. And I want you to know God is cheering you on. God is applauding you. He's cheering you on. He is rooting for you uh, to, to, to win in life, uh, to fulfill his plan, his destiny, his purpose for your life. And uh, God's not against you. He's for you. Amen. Boy, that was just a good word today. Isn't that just an encouraging word today? And, uh, and God is for us, not only as individuals, but God is for us as the church of Jesus Christ. And he wants us to be triumphant and accomplish everything that he wants us to do. And we're we're in the process. Amen. We're in the process of doing that. Well, it's summer and we've been in a summer message series entitled God's apocalyptic puzzle. If you have missed any of these messages over the last several weeks, please go on our Facebook page or our YouTube channel. They're all archived there for you. Make yourself a, you know, a bowl of popcorn and just sit down. It's going to be an hour. You know, I preached for 60 minutes. I heard about a preacher the other day. So I, well, I preached for about 12, 14 minutes every Sunday. I'm like, God, I can't even say my name in 14 minutes. <laughs> so I'm just warming up. I'm, I'm, the pistons are starting to fire and you're sitting down. My land. So, uh, um, you're getting a month's worth of messages every Sunday morning, amen, <laughs> when you come to uh, to the tab. Uh, I've got so much, and I don't give, I don't give all of the message that I, that I ever have on my heart, but I give what God gives me, amen. Well, we're in a summer message series entitled God's Apocalyptic Puzzle, and uh, we've been looking at the different pieces of the puzzle. Number one, uh, specifically... The first piece of the puzzle, along uh, God's end time timetable, uh, the next prophetic event uh, that is going to happen, and it is going to happen, uh, is the rapture of the church. How many of you know about the rapture of the church? All right. If you don't know anything about the rapture of the church, you need to know. We're going to talk a little bit more about that here today. But the last couple of weeks, we went deep, someone say deep, into what the rapture is, because more and more... Christians that I talk to uh, don't know anything about it, let alone the deep things about it. And uh, but we do. And if you have not, uh, or you weren't here, weren't able to join us last couple of weeks, please, please, please go and watch and listen, receive those messages. They will be an encouragement and a comfort for you in your faith. All right. Uh, today, I want to uh, ask three questions. The first question today, in light of the, the next prophetic event along God's timeline, the first piece of the puzzle that sparks all the other pieces uh, is, is the rapture of the church. So we looked at what that is. I want to ask today three questions, the first of which is, why does the rapture happen? Why does the rapture happen? If you've got your tab message notes, this is a good time to get them out. Write this down, because there are two reasons why the rapture happens. Now, what is the rapture? The rapture is the catching away, the snatching away of the church of Jesus Christ from planet Earth. 
earth. All right. Uh, and the first reason why the rapture happens is this. The rapture happens for us, and us means the church, children of God, to escape. Someone say escape. escape. The coming tribulation. There is a train coming down the track, and we know the name of that train. The train is called what? Tribulation. There's a train coming down the track, and it is racing towards humanity at this very moment in time. There is tribulation coming upon the earth. It's already kind of starting. You can, we can feel the tremors, right? You know, some of, some of us know some things about trains and train tracks. You, you maybe grew up close to a train or train track. You can feel that thing coming down the track. And then all of a sudden, you hear it. And then, you know, you feel it, and you hear it, and then you see it. Boy, that's a good, that's good right there. What are we doing right now? We can't see it. The tribulation hasn't started yet, but we're feeling the tremors. We're healing the choo-choo of the train. It's coming down. It's, it's maybe a couple of miles down, but it's coming. Someone say it's coming. It's coming upon the earth. All of this, Jesus said it this way, all the tremors and, 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 and things we're feeling right now are just the birth pains. It's not, it's not the birth. It's just the birth pains leading up to the birth. All right. We think it's bad now. We ain't seen nothing. And we're not, thank God we're not going to see it. All right. We're going to be raptured. We're going to be out of here. But there is a train coming. There is tribulation coming towards this planet. And it's picking up steam. And the rapture happens for us, what? To escape it. To escape the coming tribulation. I don't know about you, but I'm glad we're not going to be here. Now, there are some Christians, there are some pastors that preach that we're going to go through the tribulation. Can we prove them wrong here this morning? It's important to have right theology. Yes. It's important to know the truth from the lie. And we are not going to go through the tribulation, not for one second. Yes. Well, prove it to me, Pastor. Well, okay, let's do it. Luke 21, 36. These words are Jesus's. Watch and pray that you will be able to what? Escape. Escape what? All that's about to happen. What's about to happen? Tribulation. Like the world has never seen. Can I just kind of forward, fast forward to the, to the time of tribulation? You can read about it in Revelation 6 through 19 if you really want to get down and deep. Revelation 6 through 19 is all about the tribulation. Two thirds of the world's destroyed, two thirds of humanity dies. I mean, that right there. I mean, that's just kind of. Famines and pestilences, and I mean, it just, it's asteroids and meteor. I mean, this planet's going, nuclear war, it's all in there. It's all in there. Tribulation. Watch and pray, Jesus says, that you will be able to escape all that's about to happen, and that you may be able to stand before the Son of God. How can we stand before the Son of God? In the rapture, when we receive our resurrected bodies. You can't stand before God and live. No man stands before God and lives in this mortal flesh. So the only way we're going to be able to stand before God is to be raptured, resurrected, receive our immortal, imperishable bodies. And how does that happen? By receiving and believing in Jesus Christ now. Someone say now. 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 Not after the rapture. It's too late. We're going to talk about that here in just a little bit. So by putting our faith and trust in Jesus, we're what? We're able to escape and we're able to stand before God. Revelation 3.10, these words are also in red. Jesus says to the church, I will also keep you, you meaning the church, I will also keep you, shelter you from the hour of trial that is coming, that is going to come on what? The whole world. The whole world is going to experience this tribulation to test the inhabitants of the earth. So the first reason that God raptures us, takes us out, snatches us, catches us away, is to allow us to escape the coming tribulation that's upon the earth, that's coming upon the earth. The second reason, write this down, the rapture happens, is for us to escape the coming wrath. Now, how many of you have ever asked the question, how could a loving God allow all this evil that's going on around here? How can he sit on his throne in heaven and look down for one second and be okay with it? I've asked that question. I mean, I'm like, why doesn't God just zap some people? I mean, why doesn't God just, you know, they're gone. I mean, they're on Saturn now, you know, or 
Pluto or the moon. Put him on the moon. I don't know where, but you know, just why, do, why is God not doing something about all this evil, all this bad stuff, all this injustice that's going on? Why is God not doing anything? Well, he's, his patience is what? Is working salvation in people. He's giving us time. But listen, when the rapture happens, the time is out. And it's the time what? Where all God's, come on now, some of you know you've been angry about stuff and you held it in and you held it in until you couldn't hold it in any longer and you went, you exploded in a rage of fit or anger or frustration. Come on now, some of us know what we're talking about. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. <laughs> My wife's raising her hand, right? <laughs> Come on, we've all been there where, where something happened and you're just, you can feel it. It starts way down here and you kind of, you know, and you just, you get so angry, right? Well, the tribulation is what? Is the time of God's wrath. I don't want to be around here during the time of God's wrath. Not for one five seconds, I don't. Let alone for five minutes, five days, five years, or seven years. It's a time of tribulation. It's a time, what, of God's wrath upon this, what, upon this evil world and upon those evil doers. In other words, they're, they're gonna, they've got it coming. They've got it coming, and they're going to get it. There might not be a whole lot of justice in this world, but there's sure going to be a whole lot of justice in the next. God is going to right every wrong, and there will be divine wrath and divine justice, and can I say it this way, discipline upon those who have been disobedient and those that have worked, not just disobedient, worked evil in the earth. And the rapture happens for us to what? Escape the coming wrath of God. First Thessalonians 1 verse 10 says this, wait for his son from heaven. Are we not doing that? Wait. Now, again, wait doesn't mean passively. We learned about that last week. Wait means to expect and to anticipate uh, earnestly, right? Like you're waiting for someone to come over to dinner. You're looking down the road. Are they here yet? I'm waiting. I'm waiting. I'm looking. I'm not just kind of sitting back. I'm expecting something to happen. We're waiting expectantly for his son from where? From heaven. Jesus is coming back from heaven. Whom God raised from the dead. Jesus, and when Jesus comes back in the rapture, what is he going to do? Well, I'm glad you asked. Jesus who rescues us from what? From the coming wrath. When is Jesus going to rescue us, brothers and sisters in Christ, and every believer in Christ? At the rapture. Jesus rescues us from the coming wrath, from the train of tribulation, at the rapture of the church, when he comes back in the clouds. 1 Thessalonians 5 verse 9 says this, God did not appoint us, again talking about the church, the believe, when I mean church, capital C, believers in Jesus, God did not appoint us to suffer wrath. We just learned about that in that last song. God's for you. God's not against you. God's not going to put his children through the worst time in human history called the tribulation and experience the wrath of God. Why? Because there's, there's a difference between obedient and disobedient children. Just say you got two kids. One's obedient, the other one's disobedient. Do you spank both of them? You better not, because that would make you an unjust parent. You discipline the disobedient child. You reward the obedient child. For those that obey and receive Jesus Christ, they're rewarded by what? By the rapture. They go to heaven. But the disobedient are going to what? Suffer wrath. God didn't appoint us to suffer wrath, but to receive what? Oh, I love this. Salvation. Through Jesus Christ. And the full manifestation of salvation happens when? At the rapture of the church. See, your spirit is saved right now. You will never be more saved than what you are right now. Once you believed in Jesus Christ, you're as saved as you're ever going to get. Your spirit is. And your soul is in the process. The Bible says we're in the process of, of saving our soul. What's your soul? Your mind, will, and emotion. Come on now. Every once in a while you get that dirty thinking going on. Right? An angel jumps on this shoulder. The demon jumps on this shoulder. And your head's in between. You're like, oh, my land. They're having a ping pong match. Right? One minute you're thinking good thoughts. The next minute you're thinking dirty thoughts. Now, don't raise your hand. <laughs> right? <laughs> we're all there. Right? Our soul is being saved, the Bible says. Isn't that interesting? Your spirit's saved. You're a triune being. Your spirit. You're a spirit being. You possess a soul and you live in a body. You are not your body. Your body's like this room. 
You're getting a new body. Hallelujah. At, when do we get our new bodies? At the rapture. Our, our salvation for our bodies happens at the rapture. Your spirit saved the minute you believe in Jesus. Your soul is being saved, transformed by what? By the Word of God. And when is our body saved? When is our bodies fully manifested and saved? At the resurrection, at the rapture of the church. That's when this happens. We receive full salvation at the rapture of the church when Jesus comes back. Romans 5 verse 9 says this, Since we now have been justified by His blood, saved by the blood of Jesus, right? How much more shall we be saved? That's future. How much more shall we be saved from God's wrath through who? Through Jesus. Jesus is going to save us from the wrath that's coming upon planet earth. Jesus is going to save us from the coming tribulation. Why? Because we're his children. Because we believe and receive him as our personal Lord and Savior. That doesn't mean we're perfect. None of us are perfect. All right? But our faith, we're saved by faith, not by works. Amen? We're justified by our faith and belief in Jesus Christ and nothing else and nothing more, nothing less. That's the first, first question. The second question I want to ask and answer today is, what are the results of the rapture? Oh, this is good. Oh, we're getting into the good stuff now. All right? That's what's going to happen to us. What are the results? Well, after the rapture happens, there's a couple of things, specifically two results that happen. Number one. All unbelievers are left behind. All believers are, are snatched, caught up, taken away, raptured with Jesus, and we return back to heaven. We looked at that in detail the last couple of weeks. The first result after the rapture happens is all unbelievers are left behind. All those people who don't have faith and belief in Jesus Christ are left behind on planet earth. John 3, 18 and 19. You all know John 3, 16, right? John 3, 18 and 19 says this, Whoever believes in Him, that would be Jesus, is not condemned. But whoever does not believe stands condemned already because they've not believed in the name of God's one and only Son. This is the verdict. Light is coming to the world. That light, of course, is Jesus Christ. But the people loved darkness. Boy, isn't that true? Don't you know some people that love the darkness? They hate the light, and they don't really like you either. See, sometimes we need to understand there's a reason some people don't like us. It has nothing to do with us. It has everything to do with the light in us. It has everything to do with Jesus. Boy, I tell you what, I really got serious about God. There were some people, there were some old friends of mine, they, made, they stopped calling. They stopped inviting me out for dinner. They stopped inviting me out for the weekend. And I was thinking, what's wrong with me? Did I try? No, I didn't do anything. It just, the light got brighter, and the darkness hates the light. Come on now. It's a, and they can spiritually discern. They might not even know why they don't call you anymore. I don't know why. I don't, why don't I call Diane anymore? Well, my, I, every time I get in Diane's presence, I get convicted of the darkness. Right? Yeah. People... Unfortunately, some people love darkness instead of light. Why? Here it is. Let's look at this last line. Because their deeds are evil. See, boy, there's a, there's a lot of people, they would love to come to church, but they're not willing to what? Forsake their evil deeds. Boy, there's a lot of light in this place. And they feel conviction for, for those evil deeds. Right? Come on now. We all do. And, and here's the thing. That's a good thing. Conviction is a good thing. Conviction is, 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 is a good thing because it gives us hope for change. Condemnation is, is the opposite of, condition, uh, of conviction, I should say, and condemnation gives no hope. Condemnation says this to us, you'll never be good enough. You're headed straight to hell, buddy. Conviction says, you're a sinner, but the good news is Jesus died for sinners. And by putting your faith and trust in Jesus, you can be saved from your sins. But you're still a sinner. You're still convicted until you what? until you receive the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Those people who don't receive Jesus Christ, the Bible says already here is already condemned. They're already living in darkness. They don't have the light of Christ in their hearts. And they will be what? They will be left behind. In the mid-1990s, some of you were alive back then. Let's go way back to the mid-1990s, can we? There was a wonderful fictional 
series of books, later made into a series of movies called Left Behind. Tim LaHaye and Jerry Jenkins wrote a series of uh, 12 books. Eventually, they added four, four more. There's 16 novels based on God's apocalyptic puzzle we're talking about. Uh, and the series, of, called, is, of course, is called Left Behind. And the theme of this series, of course, is based upon those people on planet Earth who were left behind after the rapture. Uh, and I would highly recommend this. I would highly recommend you read that. that, that it's a quick read. It's an easy read. Um, there are three books in my life, and I've read thousands of books. There's three books that I pretty much have read in one setting. Just three. Good Morning Holy Spirit by my mentor, Benny Hinn. This Present Darkness by Frank Peretti. And Left Behind. It so grabbed me. I mean, I couldn't eat. I was like, and this isn't a, a small book. It just was, I mean, I plowed through that in a, in a day, in a day, read the whole thing. And, uh, and, and I think you might have that same experience, so make sure you got a day, all right, <laughs> to, uh, to read her a good afternoon or stay up all night, whatever you got to do. But I would, I would recommend this. These are fictional books based on fictional characters, but they're Bible-based. It's all Bible-based. And they go through, beginning with the rapture of the church, obviously the first book, and then they take it chronologically through the book of Revelation, uh, all 16 books in chronological order in what happens and uh, in God's apocalyptic puzzle. It is, it is wonderful. It is fascinating. I would, I would recommend them uh, to you all. Now, uh, there's also been a series of, of movies uh, based on the books. Uh, the most recent is one with Nicolas Cage. We watched this last night. I thought, I better, I better watch this before I recommend it. That's a good thing, right? That's a good thing. We watched this last night as a family. Well, some of us did. Mama fell asleep about halfway through it. All right. <laughs> Hoping I wanted to take our clothes off and lay them down on the couch and then like leave and then like blow a trumpet, you know, and then all of a sudden she's left behind. Wouldn't that have been hilarious, Jim? Wouldn't that have been great? And, and, and gone and stayed with the Brownings for the evening and then come back in the morning. Right? <laughs> Oh, I thought oh, that that get her. That wake her up. <laughs> don't respond to text messages. Don't respond to calls. I don't know. Just gone. It's just gone, right? So we watch this movie. <laughs> we watch this movie. See, that's Henri Tim. There's Henri Tim and there's Kinda. That's not that's kind of Henri Tim. We did not do that, by the way. So, uh, <laughs> so, so that's why I'm here this morning. So, so there's this this new movie. It came out in 2014. Nicholas Cage, of course, you many of you recognize him as uh, as the lead actor, and uh, it's based upon again based upon the novels by Tim LaHaye and Jerry Jenkins, but it's it's got different characters, and I would recommend this. You can watch it on I think Amazon Prime. I don't know if it's on Netflix. Uh, it might be in the you know dollar bin out at Walmart if you dig deep enough. So uh, so so I would recommend you watch this. All right, it's two hours long. Get in, pop yourself some popcorn, you know, and watch this. And uh, it covers uh, before the rapture, people just living normal lives. See, that's the whole thing. Life is just going to be normal. And then within a blink and a twinkling of an eye, boom, the rapture happens and all these people disappear. And then there's millions of people, obviously, left behind, left behind. And, uh, and I would recommend... I would recommend these, uh, these movies and these books to you. Now, uh, the people who are left behind are called what? They're called leftovers. Because they've been left over. They've been left over from what? From the rapture of the church. And they're going to be what? They're going to be going through the seven years of tribulation. Seven years of tribulation. They've been left behind on, on planet Earth earth and uh, and they're going to experience an ever changing world almost hourly the world is going to going to going to be topsy turvy we're going to talk about uh seven things that happen after that the second result of the rapture the first one people are going to be left behind who are unbelievers the second one is this the restrainer is removed this is huge so when the rapture happens, the church of Jesus Christ, every Christian believer across America and around the world are gone, are gone. And with it, the restrainer, the restrainer will be removed from the earth, allowing what? Allowing anarchy, lawlessness, evil, 
crime and injustice to run rampant with no restraining, no restraining force. Uh, and specifically, it will allow a person by the name of the Antichrist to rise. The restrainer is holding all things back. All things back. Now, what is the restrainer? Or who is the restrainer? I'm glad you asked. Second Thessalonians 2 verse 6 and 7 says this, And now you know what is holding him back, speaking of, of the Antichrist, so that he may be revealed at the proper time. For the secret power of lawlessness is already at work. Now, we're seeing lawlessness at work, are we not? I mean, it's amazing to me. Lawlessness, all right, is already at work. That's the tremors. That's the birth pains. But the one who now, someone say now, that's present tense now, holds it back and will continue to do so. We're going to hold lawlessness back until when? Until he is taken out of the way. The rapture happens, the church of Jesus Christ, every believer in Jesus globally is removed in the twinkling of an eye that fast. Boom. And with it, the restrainer. Now, some people would say the restrainer is the Holy Spirit. I don't believe that. Now, that that's my personal belief. You want to believe that? That's fine. I believe the restraining power holding back lawlessness and evil from going rampant, I mean full force around the world, is you and me. Is people like you and me around the world. And once we're gone, there's no one to stop it. There's no one to hold it back. Like a dam. You ever been to a dam? The Hoover Dam? You see these big dams holding up water? They're restraining water from, 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 from destroying, say, a city or village or countryside below it. And once, if that dam would ever break and that water by the, by the thousands and millions of tons come crashing down upon homes and businesses and schools and restaurants, trees, it would be destroyed. So the church of Jesus Christ is what? Holding back evil from having its full force. Now, every once in a while, you ever been to a dam? Am I talking to the right people? You ever been to a dam? If not, go out to Lake Bloomington. There's a dam, a little one, about that, about that tall. All right? All right, about that tall. All right? And every once in a while, water spills over the dam. Just a little trickle. That's what we're seeing now. We're seeing little trickles of lawlessness. We're seeing little trickles of riots. We're seeing little trickles of looting and crime. It's not that it's not happening. Uh, it's just a little. But once the dam breaks, once the restrainer is removed, the water comes whoo, full force. Full force. We, this world hasn't seen anything yet. Anything yet. Wait till the dam breaks. Wait till the restrainer is removed and all the plans and devices of the devil come to pass. Which, by the way, is threefold. The thief comes, Jesus said in John 10, 10, but for to steal, to kill, and to destroy. When the restrainer is removed, when the church of Jesus Christ is raptured, the 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 demons of this world and the evil powers of this world, are, there's nothing to hold them back. There's no, can I say it this way, checks and balances. I mean, it, you know, every person that stands for righteousness, truth, and justice, that's you and me, is gone. Every person. <laughs> Nothing is going to hold it back. And that's why this, this world is going to be almost destroyed in seven years. The Bible says this way, if God hadn't cut that time short, the whole world would be destroyed. Seven years. It only takes seven years, and the whole thing's about going to go up in, 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 in smoke. Why? Because the restrainer, because the restrainer is removed. Imagine this. Every Christian in the world is gone. Every Christian nurse, every Christian doctor, every Christian politician, every Christian police officer, firefighter, every mom, every dad, every teacher, every principal, every restaurant owner. Come on now. Every voter that would vote for righteousness, truth, and justice is gone. Do you want to talk about rigged elections? There will be no rigging. There's no one else to vote righteous. Everybody's gone. And it's going to lawlessness, anarchy. I mean, this world is gone. I wouldn't want to be here five minutes after the restrainer, the church of Jesus Christ, is removed. Now, the greatest argument, let me just kind of touch back on this. I kind of teased it. Many people believe this is the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is going to be removed from the earth. The Holy Spirit is going to be removed from the earth. 
Why? Because after the rapture, there's going to be a massive amount of people that get saved, that come to faith in Jesus Christ. Those leftovers we've been talking about, those people that are left over, there's a lot of them are going to get saved. They don't believe now, they're going to believe then. And, and that's kind of in the movie. I mean, people that heard the gospel and didn't receive it on the front end of the rapture are going to receive a what on the back end, and they're going to go to heaven. All right? You can't get saved without the Holy Spirit. You can't preach the gospel without the Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit's still on the earth after the rapture. All right? It's the church that's removed, and it's the church that's the restrainer. Okay, I want to talk about seven things based upon all this that happen immediately after the rapture of the church. Now, again, we're going to be in heaven. Hallelujah. But it's good for us to know what's going to happen here on planet earth to motivate us, to get us to what? To witness for Jesus. To, to really spark a fire under our seats to get serious about our faith for Jesus. Amen? Amen? The first thing that happens after the rapture of the church is this. After the rapture, there will be chaos. Chaos like you and I have never seen before. I mean, we've seen news reports over the last several years of entire cities going up in smoke and neighborhoods going up in smoke and riots and looting and everything. That will be, that will be global. There will be chaos like we've never imagined. Imagine this. Imagine three to four billion people all of a sudden vanish and go missing. There will be chaos around the world. Where did all these people go? Fear, terror, panic. You want to talk about anxiety? Anx I mean, just people that know you, that don't believe in Jesus, they're going to be looking for you. Where'd they go? Parents are going to be looking for children. Friends are going to be looking for friends. Family members are going to be looking for family members, and they're not going to be able to find you. They might find where you once stood. Now, if the rapture happens right now, all these clothes, thank God, are going to stay here. We're not taking this to heaven. We get, we get new clothes. <laughs> Hallelujah up there, right? They come in here, and, and there'll be clothes right where you're sitting. Looking for you? Well, well there's, there's dad and mom's wedding ring. There's, da there's dad's watch. It's right there on the floor. Right? Chaos like we've never seen before. On the streets. Um, it will be the lead story of the, of the evening news. Mm -hmm. Three to four billion people vanish, disappear in a twinkling of an eye. Where'd they go? It will be the front page headline on every newspaper and magazine. And radio. <laughs> Got a disc jockey right here. Right? Where did all these people go? Now, let me ask them, where did Kat go? Where's she supposed to be here today? Right? All of these, all of that, chaos, panic, fear. All of this is the first thing that happens after the rapture. I'm talking minutes and seconds after it. And it goes on for days and weeks and months and years. The second thing that happens after the rapture, you can imagine this. There will be cries. I mean, there will be people crying, not just across America, around the world. Again, parents crying for missing children. Family members crying for family members. Friends crying for friends. One of the things that, that we believe, and again, they capture this, I believe, in the book and in the movie, is every Christian believer will be raptured. And every baby, every child, and every teenager, I believe, up to the age of 13 and 14, whether they have faith or not, will be gone. There'll be no children. And there won't be a baby on planet Earth after the rapture. All the innocent people will be gone. God's not going to put babies through the tribulation. And God's not going to put people that are innocent through the tribulation. He's a good God. They're all going to heaven. They're all going to heaven in the twinkling of an eye. All right? And there will be cries. There'll be cries. Mothers who are unsaved could be holding their babies, and all of a sudden, within a twinkling of an eye, they're holding clothes. Where did my baby go? You got a toddler out there swinging in the swing? All of a sudden, boom. The swing, swinging, but there's no toddler. There's clothes on it. But that's it. There will be cries around the world. By people who are left behind over people who are gone, who are missing. 
But listen to this. The Holy Spirit said to me, there will be cries of regret and remorse from those who refuse to receive Jesus Christ. I mean, I, all the people you and I've witnessed to, I mean, I, I've, I've, I've preached in front of thousands. And I wish I could say 50% of them were saved. I don't know, hopefully more. But I guarantee you, every person I preach to isn't saved. They've heard the gospel, and there's going to be cries of remorse and regret. Why didn't I receive Jesus? They could have gone in the rapture. All they had to do was believe. By the way, there's no risk in believing. There's absolutely no risk in believing in Jesus. But there's tremendous risk in not. You have lost nothing if all this is fake. But if all of this is real, which by the way it is, and you don't believe, the first thing that's going to happen to you, you're going to get left behind. And there will be cries of regret and remorse on why didn't I receive Jesus when I could have. Now they can receive it on the back end. They'll be assured for heaven for eternity as if they were already there, but they're going through the tribulation. They're going to go through it. In fact, most Christians in the tribulation, you read the book of Revelation, are martyred. It will become illegal to be a Christian during the tribulation. We're going to get to that puzzle piece, by the way. Just, just keep holding on. Over the next couple of weeks, we're going to talk about the Antichrist. I can't wait to talk about that dude. <laughs> There's going to be cries from countless people around the world over missing members and missing opportunities to receive Jesus. I, my friends, I don't want you to miss out. Receive Jesus today while there's still time. If you're watching today online, receive Jesus Christ at the end of my message today while you've still got time. Because time is ticking. Ticking, ticking, ticking. The train of tribulation is humming down the track. And we are running out of time. I believe the rapture is closer than any one of us could possibly imagine. Number three, the third thing that happens at the rapture, write this down. There will be a time of confusion. Now again, we're in the know. Jesus, God has given us his word so we might know what's going to happen. We know, we know because God let us know in his word what's going to happen. We know the rapture is going to happen. We know the tribulation is going to happen. We know the second coming is going to happen. But who doesn't know? People who don't know the word. People who aren't Christians. The Hindus, the Muslims, the Jehovah's, come on now, the Mormons, the Jehovah's, all these other religions. They're going to be left behind. And there's going to be time of confusion. What's going on? Where did all these people go? Not just a few million. Billions of people will be gone. I believe upwards of three to four billion. Right now there's 2.7 billion believers according to most statisticians. And that's before the end time revival here in the next few years. So I believe there's going to be at least a half a billion if not a billion more people. That puts us at 3.7 if a billion people get saved in the next few years. Which I believe is going to happen. Okay, so we're talking upwards of four billion people out of seven that are gone. How many people? That's going to kind of stir some things, and it's going to bring confusion. There's going to be questions arise. Where did all these people go? Where? What happened? What do we do now? Now imagine this. Let's let's literally walk this through here. Try going to work. Let's say it happened. Let's say that we don't know the day or the hour. Amen. Let's say the rapture happens on a Sunday afternoon. What are you going to do Monday morning? You go to work Monday morning, right? Most people go to work. You go to work Monday morning, and your boss is a Christian. They're not there. Your cubicle mate next to you is a Christian. They're not there. You're the only one there. I mean, where did everybody go? Confusion. You go to you, you got a Christian doctor. You go to you got a you know doctor's appointment Monday morning. You go to the doctor's office. He's not there. She's not there. There's going to be mass confusion, and there's going to be obviously people that are going to rise during this time offering what answers. You know what one of the answers are going to be? This is in the movie in the book. Where did all these people? Where did three to four billion people just vanish, disappear within a twinkling? Of, I mean, just a, a moment time. That not even that. That's slow because it's this. Right? It's a twinkling of an eye. That's how fast we're going to disappear. You know what I think the number one answer to the questions will be of confusion? You ready for this? Alien abduction. No, I'm serious. I'm serious. They got, even right now, NASA's got like UFO investigators on this stuff. All this is lined up. Well, you know, there's all these Christians. We always thought they were kind of different. 
We always thought they were kind of off and wacky. I mean, there must have been the aliens just, whoosh, whoosh. you know, like Star Trek, beamed them up. Just, whoosh, whoosh, they just disappeared. And, whoosh, whoosh. That will be the n number one response. For real. They, be, because a carnal, unsaved world's got to justify where all these people went. Where did they go? Who took them? Aliens took them. That would be the number one answer to the confusion. To the confusion. And the chaos. And the, and the, and the crisis. All right? Number four. The fourth thing that happens after the rapture is calamities. Calamities like you and I have never heard or seen about. Massive amounts of calamities across America and around the world. We've already talked about riots and looting. Crime will escalate. Every field, every office, every industry will have lost workers, managers, vice presidents, presidents. Teachers and students will be gone. Doctors and nurses are gone. Pastors and parishioners, hopefully, will be gone in an instant, leaving the world wide open to what? Worldwide calamities. Think about this. And again, this is captured in the book and in the movie. I hate to keep telling you about the movie, but that way when you see it, it makes sense. Let's say you're a Christian is flying a plane full of people. And all of a sudden, that Christian's raptured, whether they're, they're at, you know, on the earth or in the air. You know, God's not going to say, well, land the plane and then we're going to rapture you. No, they're raptured flying the plane. Nobody's flying the plane. You better have an unsaved co pilot, right? I mean, you know. <laughs> yeah. Trucks, semis with Christians behind the wheel will all of a sudden be, and that truck's still steaming down the road. Trains, you want to talk about trains? Trains with Christian con conductors. Is that right? Is it still a conductor? Is that right? Train conductor. Engineer. Engineer. Christian engineers, gone. Cars with Christians behind the wheel, gone. Those cars are still, they're going through the red light. There'll be massive amount of calamities. And can I say it this way? I don't have it on what casualties. Hospitals will be inundated with people that have been in wrecks, whether it's trains or automobiles or, or motorcycles, all of this stuff. It just uh, casualties, calamities all around the world. It, which leads to what? Chaos and cries and confusion. All this is happening at the same time. I'm kind of piecing it and parsing it apart so that we understand that this is, all this is happening at the moment of the rapture, after the rapture. All this stuff will take place. Again, please hear me. Not just in America. Worldwide. Worldwide. Jesus is coming back for every Christian around the globe. And it will produce all of these results after the Christians, the restrainer, are removed from planet Earth. Number five, write this down. Are you receiving something today? Are you getting some information and some inspiration? Do, do any of you want to miss the rapture? Okay, nobody. All right, amen. After the rapture, number five, there will be what? The countdown. All right. The rapture, can I say it this way, isn't the end. The rapture is the beginning of the end. How many of you have ever, you know, had a bonfire, right? You, you gather the wood and the newspaper and you, you maybe got some lighter fluid. And then you got like one of those, what do we call them, little clickers? They click. What are they called? Igniters, lighters, lighters, right? And there's a spark that comes out the end of that lighter. Come on, some of you that smoke you know what I'm talking about, right? Or spark, you know, like a match, Right? Here we go. The rapture's the match. It's just a little flame. But it has massive amounts of impact and influence. You throw that, come on, you got your little igniter, and you light that match, you light that paper, all of a sudden the fire grows, and then it grows hotter, and it grows larger, and it grows bigger over time. See, the rapture is just the spark. That, that ignites the tribulation. The rapture is not the end. It's the beginning. It's the, it's the initial thing. All this stuff is being restrained. Revelation 6 through 19 is being restrained. Why? Because we're still here. We leave. We're raptured. The, the match is lit on this planet. And it's going up in smoke. Literally. Going up in smoke. 
the countdown begins of the seven-year tribulation. Now, for years and years and years, pastors and prophets have been speaking, and some of you that are, that are older in the Lord know what I'm getting ready to talk about. They say things like this, we're in the eleventh hour before Jesus comes back. We're in the eleventh hour, brother. We're in the eleventh hour, sister. Well, 20, 30, 40, 50 years ago, I'd say, yeah, we're probably in the eleventh hour. I don't, I don't believe that anymore. I believe we're, at, you want to know what the time is? I think on God's clock, now God's got the clock. We don't know for sure exactly what the timetable is before the rapture. I think it's about 11.58. Wow. I think we're in the two minute countdown. Mm -hmm. I really do. I think, I think we are so close, and I'll show you this through the next several weeks, all these things are kind of converging. The water's slowly picking up over the dam. The dam is still there. We're still here, amen? But it's, it's not the 11th hour. It's not 11.15. It's not 11.27. It's not 11.32. It's not 11.48. I think it's 11.58. I think time, again, no man knows the day or the hour. Amen? Don't, don't hear me saying, well, Pastor Tim knows the day and that. No, 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 no. No man knows the day or the hour. But I think the hours, the, we're down to minutes. We're into, into the minutes. We're, we're quickly approaching seconds before Jesus comes back. We're in the two-minute drill. So what does that mean for you and I? It means for us as the church of Jesus Christ to arise, to awaken to the will and purposes of God and get to doing what God commissioned us to do some 2,000 years ago, which was what? Go into the world and make what? Disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. It's time for the church of Jesus Christ to stand up to be seen, to speak up to be heard, and to begin doing what God's commissioned and empowered us through the Holy Spirit to do. Can I get an amen? Amen. 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 This isn't the time for us as the church, capital C, to be sitting on our blessed assurances, watching the pastor do all the work. Or a few ministers do all the work. We all need to be in on this. We all need to get ready. And that, that's where this mess. I told Mindy, I said, you know, I'm preaching all this stuff on the God's apocalyptic puzzle to get to my last message, which is going to happen about August 31st. <laughs> I've got that message already. I'm, I mean, I, I, I got to get us there. This, is, this series is all about the last message. I'm going to be reaching out to all of you now. Don't you? You're going to be there tomorrow, right? You're going to be at church tomorrow. You don't, don't miss this message. It's all about the last message, about what we're supposed to be doing between now and the rapture of the church. There's some things we've got to be doing because the countdown is real. The countdown is on and it's ticking. It's ticking, ticking, ticking. And we've got to get ready and we've got to get prepared and we've got to get to doing what God's called us to do and we've got to get to moving and, and I hate to say shaking. We've got to get moving and shaking. In regard to what God's called us. That's what, again, let me remind you, that's what phase two is all about here. Yep. We're making room for more. Yep. We've got plenty of what we have. Mm -hmm. This is great. This is wonderful. We even have some empty seats. Not a whole lot, but we've got some. Mm -hmm. But we're not, we're not, we're not satisfied and with who we have and, and the people we're reaching. We're believing there's going to what? Come a great harvest of souls into the, into the end time church of Jesus Christ before the rapture. And we've got to make room for them. They're going to come. They're going to come. Amen? Amen. Your friends, your family members, your coworkers, your neighbors, your little Starbucks lady that makes you that, you know, dragon fruit drink thing. <laughs> We're making room for her. <laughs> All right? That's what we're doing. That's what we're doing. We're getting ready. Uh, and, and so listen, when it happens, you better not be shocked. Be shocked if it doesn't happen. Okay? We got to get ready. We got to get ready. And, and when we pack that place out and we go overflow, we'll rent the Coliseum. Hey Amen. I mean, we'll just go, we'll, we'll just do whatever we got to do to make room for more, to bring it in. Because here's the deal. There's coming, even right now, can I, can I just share something real quick? There's coming a separate, this is a time of separation between the true believers and, and the not true believers, between the true pastors and the not true pastors, between the true Christian and the not true Christian. Just because they got the word church in their name doesn't mean they're a church. I mean, there's stuff happening. There, there is stuff happening today in the body of Christ that is false. And false doctrines, unfortunately, are being preached and perpetrated behind the pulpits. It's terrible. 
And revival's not coming to those churches. Revival's coming to what? To the one true church. And listen to this. It's not about denomination. If you, if you got a Christian pastor that's on fire for God, it doesn't matter what the name is. I don't care what it is. God will use it. God uses all kinds of people and churches, sizes and races to reach people. And He's going to do it quickly. Why? Because the countdown, the countdown is clicking. Number six, I'm running out of time talking about countdown. After the rapture, number six will be the catalyst. Again, we talked about the spark, right? After the rapture, there will be the catalyst for what? The rise of a global leader called the Antichrist. Can I just fast forward to a future message real quick? During the time of chaos, cries and confusion, calamities, all this stuff, you know what the world's going to look for? A leader. A leader to bring what? To bring peace. You want to know what the number one description of the Antichrist is? He's a man of peace. He's going to bring peace to the world. He will. That's the first thing he's going to do. Calm down, everybody. I got it. Give me all the power. And they will. They'll give him all the power. He's going to be a global leader. Globally. How do you know that? Because the Bible says it. Not because I said it. Not because certainly, you know, the media outlets uh, have said it. It's because the Bible says it's going to happen. The global leader will rise. And with it, listen to this, globalism. We're already seeing globalism come across the dam, right? Socialism. It's already starting to trickle over there. It's going to be full force globalism. Socialism. A one world order. Even, even, even presidents and prime ministers today, even our president today, is talking about what? A one world order. A new world order. What's the Great Reset about? You hear about the Great Reset? What is it? I'll boil it down real quick in 30 seconds. The one world order. They're resetting everything. They're removing sovereignty from every nation. Why do you think America is under attack? Because it's the greatest sovereign nation on planet Earth. They've got to take America out if they're going to have a one world order. If there's going to be one globalism and socialism and one world economy, one world health care system, all this stuff, it will, it will be what? It will be the catalyst for all that. After the rapture. It's being set up right now. It's being set up right now. And it will be in full force when? When the restrainer is removed. When the restrainer is moved. Hallelujah. Aren't you grateful we're going to be gone? Aren't you grateful Jesus is going to come back for us so we might escape all this mess? Hallelujah. Now, in the meantime, we've got to live with the trickle. And the trickle about drives me nuts. <laughs> I mean, I'm like shaking people. I mean, listen, communism and socialism has failed every country that's established it. Amen. Do your research. Yes. Karl Marx. Oh. Come on. <laughs> Be nice, Pastor. He was demon possessed. Yes. I mean, that man was a lunatic. He would be locked up today. Karl Marx. Well, who's Karl Marx? He's the, he's the originator of socialism and globalism. Yes. Even his own family members thought he was nuts. Yes. Man didn't shower. Yes. Lost his mind. I mean, just an evil, wicked person. Yes. All right? So, so, but all this stuff is going to come. I, I want to tell all these people, globalists, socialists, you want that? Oh, I do. Just hold on. You're going to get left behind. You can enjoy it for seven years. <laughs> See how it goes. You want a one world order? Great, it's coming. Enjoy it. Enjoy trying to buy a loaf of bread without the mark of the beast. What's the beast? It's the economic system. It's the barcode. It's the chip in your hand. Right? Enjoy. You want that? That's okay. It's coming, sister. Just give it some time. Just give it some time. Once I'm gone, you can have it. <laughs> you can't have it until I'm gone. That's what we need to be doing right now. No, 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 no. It ain't happening while I'm here. Not on my watch. That's what we need to be doing. We need to say, no, no, no. Socialism, globalism, one world economy, one world order. This is not happening on my watch. Now, once I'm raptured, have to it. Have all you want, and it's coming, and they can have it, and it's going to be a mess. And thank God, thank you, Jesus, we're not here. Amen. Amen. And every once in a while, I don't know, Hope asked me, do you think we can kind of peer over heaven's portal and look down on the earth and just kind of see how bad it is? I said, I don't know. I don't know. Look, oh, my God, that's terrible. <laughs> I, can't, I can't even look. Come on now. I mean, it's going to be, a, this whole world is going to be a mess. 
Are we on number seven? Yes. Number seven, the seventh thing that happens after the rapture is the second coming of Jesus Christ. Everybody's excited about Jesus coming back to earth. It's not going to happen until after the rapture. The rapture is the spark that begins the seven-year tribulation. After the seven-year tribulation, then Jesus comes back with who? With us. We're coming with Jesus, the Bible says. With Jesus. Jesus in the rapture comes for us, and we go back to heaven with Him. In the second coming, the Bible says we're coming with Jesus. Well, we can't be with Jesus if we're on planet earth during the tribulation. Well, golly, that makes kind of sense. That's kind of logical. <laughs> You know, I love poking holes in people's theology. We're coming with Jesus. Means we're not here during the seven year tribulation. We're coming with Jesus in the second coming, and the Bible calls it what? The Battle of Armageddon. I've been to that valley. It's 75 miles uh, north to south and 25 miles wide. Stood there on the rim, looked down on it, got pictures, took video. Looked at it, and I was like, oh my Lord. Napoleon said to the Valley of Megiddo, the Valley of Armageddon, there's no greater valley in the world for a, a world battle than the Valley of Armageddon. That's what Napoleon said to that valley. And it's going to happen. When is it going to happen? It's going to happen at the second coming of Jesus Christ. Larry Norman, uh, many, many, many years ago, wrote a song. If you've never, never listened to this song, I, I want you to look it up. It's, uh, it's entitled... I wish we'd all been ready. I wish we'd all been ready. And I want to read you just a few lines from, uh, from, from the song. Here it is. Life was filled with guns and war, and everyone got trampled on the floor. I wish we'd all been ready. Children died, the days grew cold. A piece of bread could buy a bag of gold. I wish we'd all been ready. There's no time to change your mind. The sun has come, and you have been left behind. I wish we'd all been ready. I want to ask you today in closing, are you rapture ready? Are you ready for the coming of Jesus? Are you ready? Well, Pastor Tim, I got this. No, are you ready? Are you ready for Jesus? Is your, is your life right with God? Is your heart right with the Lord? Have you invited him into your heart and life? John 3, 16, 17 says this, For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whosoever, whoever believes in him, that's you and me, shall not perish but have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. Romans 10 9 and 13 says this, if you, someone say, that's me. If you confess with your mouth, Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart, God raised him from the dead. You will be saved. For it is with your heart that you believe and are justified. It is with your mouth that you confess your faith and are saved. And I love verse 13. Everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. We'll be saved from what? Not just hell. Saved from the tribulation. Saved from going through the tribulation. Saved in the rapture of the church. John 1 verse 12 says this, To all who received Him, that's Jesus, to those who believed in His name, He gave the right to become children of God. What must I do to be saved? Believe and receive Jesus Christ is your personal Lord and Savior, and you will become a child of God. You will become a son of God. You will become a daughter of God. And you will be assured for heaven as if you were already there. And the Holy Spirit will come into your heart and life, and you can live this life with full assurance that whenever the rapture happens, and no man knows the day or the hour, I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm rapture ready. I'm ready for the return. Why? Because my heart's right with God. Not everything's right in my life. You got some things that got to get straightened. God will get you straightened out. He'll, he's got a way. To, but your heart is right with God. Your heart's right with God. My question to you today as I close is what will you do with Jesus? What are you going to do with Jesus? Every person must answer that question. Will you 
reject Jesus, you've got that opportunity today to reject Jesus. You have a free will. God gave every person a free will. You can reject Jesus today, my friend. That's fine. God gives you that power and the authority to do so. But I'm telling you right now, you reject Jesus and the rapture happens within the next 30 seconds, you're going to be left behind. You're going to be left behind. That's option one. You can reject Jesus today. Option two, you can receive Jesus today. You can welcome Jesus into your heart and life through faith, through just inviting him into your heart and life, making him your Lord and Savior. You can do that today. And then whenever the rapture happens, whether it happens in the next 30 seconds, 30 hours, 30 days, or 30 years, you're ready. You're ready because your heart is ready for God. And I want you to know it is God's will, according to the Word of God, it is God's will for every person to be saved. Every person to be saved. God wants every one of us saved. God wants every one of your family members, friends, co-workers, even the crazy ones, to be saved. To come to the knowledge and faith of Jesus Christ. My question is, what about you today? What will you do with Jesus? Will you reject him or will you receive him? I want to encourage you, my friends, to receive Jesus with open arms and open hearts, with every atom of your being. Just welcome him into your life as your personal Lord and Savior. Can we do that today as we close? Let's bow our heads and close our eyes. If you're here today and you say, Pastor Tim, I am one of those that want to receive Jesus today as my personal Lord and Savior. If that is you, my friend, would you pray this prayer out loud with me? And other brothers and sisters in Christ who've prayed it before are going to pray it out loud with you because we stand side by side together in our profession and confession of faith that Jesus is Lord. Pray this prayer out loud today. Say these words, Dear God, I come before you this morning, a sinner in need of your grace. Forgive me of all my sins. Come into my heart and life. Be my Lord and Savior. And help me live for you. And help me be a witness for you. All the days of my life. Until you come back for me. In the rapture of the church. This I ask and pray. In Jesus name. And everybody said, amen and amen and amen. Would you put your hands together? <laughs> Praise God.